Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of History and Now. My name is Dwaap Sar and today we will take a trip down the road of history. Agartala Sazers. 16 December 1971. A day we remember in history as the fall of Dhaka. We read about the separation of East Pakistan from West Pakistan in history books. What the Bengalis label as a day of victory. But not all was simple and smooth. Several terrifying incidents led to this, followed by more ordeals. But isn't that what history is all about? Any revolution or real change cannot come into being without bloodshed, war, or sacrifice. Why do two states, which were once one state, have such contrasting views about the same incident? Today, we will see what this is all about. Today we have one such incident on our latest episode of History and Now, the Agartala Sazers. What was the conspiracy? Who was involved and what happened? What led up to the fall of Dhaka? Let's dive a little deeper into it today. The Agartala conspiracy was a conspiracy that took place in 1968 accusing a group of Bengali civil and military officers of treason against the state of Pakistan in the Indian city of Agartala. The case caused chaos in Pakistan and this was during Ayub Khan's government. After the whole Agartala conspiracy blew up in the sitting government's face, Ayub Khan had to step down after his decade-long tenure. After this conspiracy, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was considered the key person and met some Bengali officers and activists in the city of Agartala. He encouraged them to continue their anti-state activity in India, and the Awami League party was gaining more and more popularity during this time. eventually leading to them winning the elections by a huge margin it was during the tenure of a military government but this move backfired for them meaning the bengalis of east pakistan were coming up front soon after the 1965 war sheikh mujibur rahman decided to present the six points for provincial autonomy which became the backbone of the bengali movement ayub khan's government tried to politicize the event which they felt would lead to a backlash towards Mujibur Rahman and label him as a traitor. Ironically, the situation turned around and the backlash came towards none other than the government, forcing Ayub Khan to step down. The Six Point Movement as well as Mujibur Rahman actually gained the popularity amongst the public. When the sitting government felt threatened because of the government gaining momentum, they arrested Sheikh Mujibur Rahman in 1966. A year later, Many Bengali civil servants were also arrested as they were accused of conspiring against the state of Pakistan with the help of India. In 1965, 6 years before the fall of Dhaka, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman met with some Indian officials including R N Kao who later went on to form RAW, the intelligence agency in the Indian city of Agartala, which was close to the Indo-East Pakistan border. The fact that they chose the city shows that it was of geographical significance to the whole conspiracy there has been proof in history that raw research and analysis wing in india was involved in the agartala conspiracy in 2011 shaukat ali one of the accused in the conspiracy stated that the agartala sazish was indeed a real event and all the charges against the accused in the list were true the agartala sazish was very real in the fall of dhaka in 1975 Four years after the fall of Dhaka, and almost a decade after the conspiracy, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was assassinated by the Bangladesh Army in a coup, along with other family members as well, except his daughter, who was studying abroad at that time. The assassination was the first attempt of military invasion in civilian-run government in Bangladesh. There have been theories about who was involved in the killings. Some signs point towards Raw. which raises some eyebrows that why did the people who helped Rahman in the first place end up stabbing him in the back they considered this as a milestone in the overall movement that eventually led to the separation of bengalis or the fall of dhaka there are mixed views about this but real historians have commented that the situation was not as bad as it became because the agartala conspiracy aggravated the situation the case for the conspiracy was tried in court but led to it being closed because of the rising political tensions the conspiracy just further alienated the bengalis living in pakistan and after this whole incident the movement as well as sheikh mujibur rahman gained even more momentum 
Such events, which took place in the earlier side of Pakistan's history, show that things have always been turbulent since we gained independence in 1947. Even now, if we compare, there is still great chaos in the society. Things don't seem such different than they were in 1970s. Now do they? The Gartala conspiracy was a milestone for the East Pakistanis, but a setback for Pakistan as a whole. The Bengalis were demanding a separate state for themselves, which set in motion the events that led to what we know today as Bangladesh. This led to what we call the Agartala conspiracy case, where a group of 35 Bengali servants and militants were accused of conspiracy and treason against Pakistan. They were to be tried in courts for this very reason. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was not on the original list of the accused, but this time his name was added, and that too at the first spot. Of course, historical perspectives can be very one-sided, and this event was no exception either. Many regard Rahman for his action, boldness against the powerful and standing up for what is right. Others label him as an anti-state traitor, which only concocted such a situation to create chaos in the society or for material gain. There will always be mixed reviews about everything, even this. But one thing is for sure, Agartala Sazish combined with many other factors led to the long-lasting hostility between Pakistan and Bangladesh, which if seen on a grassroots level, does not exist. And the people on both sides love each other. They want to coexist peacefully. They want to know about us and we want to know about them. The involvement of the media and politics, as well as some other states, has created this bubble around both these countries which can be easily popped. Bengalis and Pakistanis are kept at a distance from each other because that is a populist approach. If both the states and its people coexist peacefully and happily, that would be the less popular approach, which is why it doesn't suit the state authorities. Today, if someone asks us what we think of the Bengalis, we will welcome and accept them with open arms and smiles. And the same way, if someone asks the other side, they will extend a hand of friendship as well. Only the powerful people in prominent positions do not want to take a step, and they end up colouring opinions of the people like you and me sitting here. It's been over 50 years. Both states need to move on from such a terrifying episode. The bloodshed lasted for a while, but the hostility is still there. As Pakistani, we must see how we can improve the situation 50 years later. Will the history books say the same thing about us, or have we finally buried the hatchet? This is Doab Sar signing off for today's episode of History and Now. Hope you enjoyed our take on the Agartala conspiracy and we hope to see you in the next episode as well. Please like, subscribe and tell us in the comments what you would like to see in the next episode. Until then, Allah Hafiz.